Hello and welcome to Two Dancing Clams. In this video, I will cover the best way to apply a random color to an instance or a duplicated object. There are a few other techniques for accomplishing this, but the others have drawbacks, such as they only work if every object has the same number of vertices. I will show you how this works for geometry created with instance on points and duplicate elements. So this is the project in its final form. I have a, these spheres are instances, and these cubes are duplicated, and they each have a color hooked to a random value generator. Let's get on with the video. I want to do two things here right at the top. The first of which is turn on screencast to make it easier to follow along. And I want to make sure that Node Wrangler has been turned on. So go up to Edit Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab, search for Node Wrangler. And it is on. This is Geometry Nodes, so let's give ourselves some. First, really quick, because it's not the purpose of this video, I'm going to create some geometry. So we want a circle that we're going to put our spheres onto. We need the spheres. I'm going to want to be able to control the number of spheres we use. So I'm going to do that with our sample. This is going to an instance on points. We are going to place the spheres onto those points. And we're going to run them to the geometry. So I want to make these a little bit smoother. So increase the subdivisions to four. I want to make them a bit smaller. So crank this down a bit. And I want to create more of them. Cool. Now, thing I want to do is let's give ourselves a material to use. So I'm going to call our material random. And I'm going to use that over here. Set material. And I'm going to use it. Now instances do not have geometry to attach the material to, so we need to give it that with realize instances. And this is going to be random colors, so let's go ahead and do that now. When I connect this random value to the output group, we create a new variable here, and that same output variable shows up here. If we give it a name, we can use this name inside the material to reference this value. Let's go ahead to the material editor. And by bringing up an attribute box, give it the name that we saved. Turn on material preview. Okay, now this is wrong for several reasons. One, it's not color, but mostly because each vertex is getting a random value, not each instance, not what we want. But that's exactly what this video is going to show you how to fix. While I'm here, I want to add a hue saturation value node. I'm going to use this to control the hue. That'll just give us something a little bit more interesting to look at later. Okay, go back here. So the problem is when the material comes back and asks for a random value, it's getting a random value per vertex. We want to stop that. There is a node called Mesh Island. And this node will create a unique number for each contiguous piece of geometry. We could actually use this. So let's use that instead of random. Now, this is not very interesting because island count starts at zero and goes up to the number of spheres I have. 
And this value here is expected to be between zero and one because it's the output factor. Now I could get a value between zero and one by dividing these two. So now we have a color per sphere, but it's not random. It's from zero to one. But that shows you the gist of what we're trying to do. Now we can't multiply these two together because again, the random, this box would provide a random value for every vertex, even though this one wasn't. That wouldn't get us where we wanted to, but we can fix this. There is a node called accumulate. Now what this does is every time it's called, every time it's accessed, it pulls a number in and it adds it to a running total. The first time it's called, the leading value will be the total, which is the first number we put into it. The trailing value will be zero because the, uh, the box is previously initialized. We can use this island index as a group index. Now what this does is instead of just having one value that's accumulating, we will have one value per group index, which is the same as one value per sphere. We're getting closer. Now, again, the first time this is called, this trailing value will be zero. Let's use that. By comparing equal to zero, this is true the first time this box is accessed. So let's make a decision based on that. I'm going to switch between floats. So the first time this is called, we want its output to be the first random number we were given. Any other time we're called, we want it to output zero. What are we going to do with this? We're going to put it into another accumulate. that has to use the same group index. Okay, so again, the first time we're called, this output will be the first random value. Every other time we're called, this output will be zero. So this will start at zero. It will become the first random enter that it will become the first random value. It'll stay there forever. So now we have one random value per sphere. Let's go ahead and show how this is done with duplicate elements because it's just a little bit different. So let's give ourselves a cube. We're going to duplicate it a few times. We want to set position so the cubes are not stacked all on each other. We're going to use the index of each cube to offset the Z coordinate. So these will go upwards. And let's go ahead and join geometry so we can see it. Now we're not going to see anything because we asked it to duplicate uh, points, but these are faces. Okay. And let's make them a bit smaller and we're not seeing the material because we didn't apply it so let's do that cool now this didn't work because we are duplicating the faces which meets which makes each face an island which is not what we want so instead of treating these as faces we want to treat them as instances and we can do that so let's change them to instances so let's change them to instances. Geometry to instance. And we are no longer duplicating faces, so we need to change this to instances. And we need to realize them just like we did with the spheres. And we're done. So now the cubes are behaving exactly like the spheres do. And if we change this seed here, we get that. And if you want to know where the original value, original video got this value over here, it's the same trick we did with the output. So I can do a group input, and I can pull the seed into it. And now we have a nice value over here we can play with. 
And that's the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.